What's happening? How are you? Matt De Benedetto, driver of the number 21 Motorcraft Quick Lane Ford Mustang, joining us here on our Zoom call on Tuesday. Uh, appreciate all our media friends joining in. We've got Matt here for about 20 minutes or so. So if you've got a question for Matt, by all means, raise your hand, shoot me a chat, and um, we'll get started here. Let's uh, let's kick it off with Woody Kane. Go ahead, Woody. Hey, uh, thanks for your time, Matt. Just wanted to look ahead a little bit. We don't often say two weeks off, but you've got that coming up after New Hampshire. I'm curious, are you going to have big plans? You're going to, you know, load up the mystery machine and go on a big vacation somewhere, or are you going to use that vacuum cleaner behind you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks, Woody. I'm, uh, uh, so we, speaking of this vacuum cleaner, are in that two weeks off going to be moving to our new house. So our house is, looks like a little bit of a hurricane blew through it in part. So we're uh, super, super excited about that. So we've been uh, working on that, uh, the house build for about a year. Best time ever to be sponsored by Menards, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but it's all been uh, super good. So that's really the the big plans. And we've got family coming into town at the same time. So it'll be a pretty crazy couple off weeks. Great. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Yeah, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Woody. Let's go to Bob. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Matt. Obviously, you wish that you could make it on points. But where you're at in the standings now, I mean, is there any, what are the benefits to just knowing that you don't have to really worry about points. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's not a situation that we want to be in, but that's, uh, heck, that's out of our control. So no sense um, putting any energy into to that. And just uh, like you're talking about, focus on the positives of it, which is, um, <clears throat> I'll give you the list of the positives. One is that we are the best we've ever been as a team. Uh, you guys see it. We're, our team's clicked. I've talked about it a lot here lately our team has clicked to a level it never has uh jonathan hassler ever since he's taken over we we've our whole team has just clicked very fast uh, we work together incredibly well um we're executing our races it's showing you know since he stepped in man we've been in the top 10 almost every week uh nashville we were up in the top 10 we had electrical issues road america we lead laps finished in the top 10 we go this past weekend make you know a solid day out of the car and finish night so <laughs> What I'm getting at is uh, we are the strongest that we've ever been. Um, we've, I'm thankful to the team and everybody for working through that whole process and uh, the results are showing. So we are in the best position we've ever been in to go out there and feel like we can absolutely win. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. All right, let's go to Dustin Long. Go ahead, Dusty. Thanks. Um, Matt, I'm just curious. Um, as the years progressed, how has your willingness and what, I guess, what you're willing to do changed if it has at all in uh, late race situations? Uh, you know, are, are you more willing and, and would it be more acceptable for somebody like yourself to do something um, that maybe breaks an unwritten rule or, or kind of gets over it a little bit just because, hey, you can say, look, I've, I've put my time in. Um, this is my shot. I'm going to take it. I don't think anybody's going to have any bad vibes about that. How, how do you look at that? How has that changed through your years in, in racing? Yeah, I think I've been lucky to gain the respect of, uh, you know, all my competitors out there and always, you know, race smart and know what situations it's, you know, when you do have to push and throw big blocks and race really hard and aggressive and also when to race respectfully. So I think I've always had a good balance um on that because it is important to gain respect of everybody else but uh yeah i think everyone knows too when it comes down to that situation the level of desperation that is there um for in the situation to have a shot at winning you know you'll get more aggressive and you'll get more desperate it's desperate is the word <laughs> uh, if we are in that situation so pretty much do you know you got to do anything anything for your team if you have a shot at winning whatever it may be even if it is like uh, crossing the line a little bit on racing hard or super aggressive or whatever it is. So I don't know the situations though, or what it is. Uh, I'll find out if hopefully we're in that spot where we are contending for, for the win, hopefully here in New Hampshire, which is a good track for us. And I'll have to just uh, play it by ear and continue to know that I've, you know, I'm fortunate to have been around the series a long time and pretty level-headed and I use my best judgment. You see that your mindset has changed in that through the years. And if so, is that as much because of what, the sport is changing or do you feel like you've been able to kind of keep your same 
guidelines in such situations from a few years ago? I think the racing is uh, more aggressive than it's ever been. Um, it's just a different code of conduct than, you know, maybe years ago when I was watching and looking up to guys like Mark Martin and Tony Stewart, you know, where they'd race hard, but also respectfully and smart. I think you see uh, bigger blocks and, and part of that's the, the aero package at the, the mile and a half. So in particular, I would say, and obviously the super speedways, um, maybe not quite as, quite as bad on short tracks, but I think some of that style of racing has just changed and we've kind of had to adapt a little bit with that to how big track position is. And, you know, you, you have to do moves and some things that sometimes you just don't want to do, but I still uh, feel fortunate that I've always found a balance in when to do those things, because I don't want to be known as the guy that races stupid and with disrespect or, you know, affects outcomes of races or wins or, you know, uh, things like that. I, I always want to find that right, that right balance. And I think I've always kind of treaded that line well, where I'm very aggressive. Uh, we heck last year, we made up the most, we were the number one restart team made up the most position on restarts throughout the year. So, I mean, aggressive when it's uh, necessary, but not wadding up the field or, or doing silly things. Thank you. Thanks Dustin. All right, let's go to Aaron McFarlane. Go ahead, Aaron. Thanks. Hey, Matt, uh, appreciate your time today. You, you're talking about the respect level in the garage, and, and I know you, you're a popular driver in the grandstands, too. I, I can't imagine there'd be a more popular victory lane celebration than, than yours. Have you allowed yourself just to kind of daydream what that would look like, what it would feel like to, to pull that off? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, what's, uh, what's interesting is I'm actually fortunate for, for a lot of things, but short version is my whole life I've been, you know, I, I've said that winning a cup race was my, I thought that would complete my life. And that's everything is winning a cup race, winning a cup race. That level and desire has not changed one bit, but uh, the perspective on it has changed. Um, that would have been an empty feeling if I thought that was what was going to complete my life, you know. So my, my faith journey is actually what, um, you know, my relationship with God is what, what changed my life. And that was the biggest victory I ever got. So what I'm getting at and where that pertains to racing, to answer your question, is uh, yes, I used to envision it all the time. I still envision it all the time. But my perspective is different and it actually keeps me um, a little bit calmer. So it actually gives you a better perspective, even when you are inside of the race car. Uh, so, so maybe you're, uh, you know, a little more level headed and it's an extra veteran type move or whatever you want to call it. Um, that you, you're, you're just kind of calmer. And it's, it, I don't know if that ex answers your question very well, but um, I just have a better perspective on, on things and calmer. And, and when that situation comes, you know, you maybe you won't make, make it maybe it'll help to make sure you don't make stupid mistakes or anything like that if you're in the lead you're just going to head down digging knowing this is your job and this is your job to win for your race team Thanks, jeff magliacetti you are up go ahead thank you matt thank you for joining us today uh hope everything's going well for you good luck with that move um and speaking of which you know there's probably been a lot of stress in your life. I mean, you're moving, you, uh, the future is uncertain and, you know, you're on the playoff bubble right now. So you mentioned how strong your faith has been during this process. Has there been any, uh, you know, individuals in your life or in, and, or multiple people who have helped you, uh, you know, remain grounded during these times of stress? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So uh, yeah, you know, when I look at it, when I think of it, the way you word it, um, and I've gotten a lot of people that have kind of asked a similar question. I, sh I should, I guess, be uh, extremely stressed, but, uh, but I'm not. I I've learned I just focus on the things 100% that are in my control. And because um, I have that perspective and, you know, my level of faith, it, it, it directly affects my racing career and all for the positive because um, I don't show up to the racetrack miserable or grumpy or pissed off that, uh, we're on the bubble and because, you know, we had bad circumstances to start the year or this or that. I just, um, I still, it doesn't change your fight and your drive and that I live for this stuff 24 seven. 
Um, and I'm meant to be driving race cars. I feel like I'm meant to win, you know, and I, all these things it doesn't change that, but uh, yeah, it changes your perspective and it's all for the positive on the racing side. And there were a lot of people in the industry. So my wife uh, was one that was changed my life. You know, she's always had strong faith. I was stubborn and I chose to reject it for a long time, to be honest with you. And um, then I, I started to dig into it. Uh, people in the industry, which is the amazing part. I wish we did more stories on this. There's so much that goes on in the industry. That's not really heavily talked about. And it blows my mind. Uh, but Michael McDowell was a huge part in changing my entire life, mine, my relationship with my wife, everything. Um, and Eric Almarola. And, you know, there's there's many people that the MRO, Motor Racing Outreach at the racetrack, all these people were a part in changing my life, people in the industry's lives, all this, which is absolutely incredible and would be, a you know, probably a pretty cool uh, story to, to cover and, and share. It's what, what goes on within our industry is truly amazing. Very interesting. Thank you for that. That was, that was that was a great answer. Thank you so much. And yeah, of course. Thanks, man. Thanks for the question. Oh no problem. Uh, I got one more. If that's cool. Go yeah. On. From a racing perspective, actually, uh, we're going to New Hampshire this week, and uh, you struggled there at first, but you're coming off uh, back to back top six finishes. I think six in the ninety five, and then top five last season, or it might be the other way around. Forgive me if that's wrong. But what was the sort of uh, aha moment for you in solving New Hampshire, and what's the key to solving a track like that? Yeah, it's uh, a couple things. Riding in some fast hot rods, that's the that's the best part. So having a really good team, uh, the 21, our, our team's usually really good there. Our car was super fast there. Um, so team side, feel really good about our cars. And we're going to a track that, uh, you know, I call it a short track, whatever you want to call it, at a time where we're getting stronger and stronger, more competitive as a team and all the things I talked about, the crew chief scenario, our whole team clicking, all that. So super pumped to go to New Hampshire. On a personal driving style side, everyone knows it's no secret. I'm pretty outspoken about it. I love the high horsepower, low downforce races. They fit my style. Um, I, I get the most excited to run them as well. And I grew up short track racing and such. And, you know, stock cars should be slip sliding around and all those things that we do at New Hampshire, which makes it a really fun race. Thanks. Thanks for that, Matt. Appreciate your time and insight. Uh, hope the new place has just as sweet of an eye racing setup in there. So, yeah. <laughs> That's right, man. Appreciate it. All right, let's go to RJ. Go ahead, RJ. Hey, Matt. Thanks for your time. So um, I know I haven't seen you driving a ton of different stuff, but last week you you drove a midget, right, with uh, with Ryan Ellis? Yep. How was that? Yeah, so that was a blast. So I drove for Tyler Thomas Motorsports. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, – you know, I've talked about – I grew up dirt racing. I've talked about wanting to, to try out a, a midget and see – you know, if it all came back to me, like riding a bike, because anytime I've hopped in a dirt car, I've usually a few times I've usually won or ran really well or take it to it. Well, so it was kind of a personal thing. I just want to see how I adapted to it, how quick I adapted to it. And um, maybe think about running the chili bowl. I'm not sure. First step was just to, to kind of see, you know, how I ran and, and obviously NASCAR takes uh, first priority. So I'll see where, things to lead me for next year and all that stuff has to play out. But, um, but I, it was awesome. I took to it way faster than expected. Uh, won the heat race by a ton. And in the feature, we were flying through the field. I had to start 10th, but flying through the field and actually ended up getting caught up in a crash when I got up to fourth. Um, but yeah, we were ultimately we're super fast, absolute blast to drive. Would love to do more of it. Awesome. And, and as far as the upcoming races, you got two road courses left to the playoffs. You guys had a great run at road America. I'm sure that, kind of gave you guys a lot of momentum maybe you're looking forward to those two races uh, yeah we that was our weakness was was road courses in our 21 program we were just off on speed and feel the car and you know what's uh what's amazing is is seeing being able to see the results and see the gains like communicating with the team and being like man we need to work on this we need to work on lateral grip we're still lacking here and here and here because at the 95 team, we were flying. That road courses were our biggest strength, and we were probably weaker on other places. So it's flip side here. And seeing the work of the team translate directly over uh, to the racetrack is amazing. So it makes you more excited to go to those places. Road America was extremely encouraging that we've made those kind of strides. We still have you know room to go uh, and, and continue to get better, but it's encouraging when we know we got to win one of these races coming up that we're uh, tying our whole program together and we as a team are working excellent together and Jonathan Hassler has been a, a real game changer on the 21 team. Awesome, man. Best of luck this weekend. Thanks, man.
Let's go to Mitchell Brewer. Go ahead, Mitchell. Hey, Matt, thank you for your time. I was just curious if there is any update on your 2022 plans as of yet. No, sir. Uh, nothing yet. And everyone knows I'm super open book. So what I'm telling you is 100% everything I know, which is I don't know anything more than any of you guys know, unfortunately. There have been no talks, no nothing. Um, you know, from the Team Penske side, they're usually pretty quiet. Or when I say pretty quiet, like very, very quiet. Um, so they like to keep it all kind of internal communication until they have a plan and then they, you know, communicate it to you. So it's, um, yeah, kind of a wait and see game. The cool part is uh, that we are showing that we have, you know, made good uh, efforts to make our 21 team better and that we're here to win. And the proof's in the pudding. We're, we're now performing, running up front, leading laps. Like we, we've turned this whole program around. It's clicking and all, all these things. Um, so that does nothing but just help my situation moving forward, you know, show, showing that we uh, have the ability to go out there and contend for wins. And we've just had to uh, continue to work on this team, the 21 team, to, uh, to make us execute better and be better as a team. And that's my job as a, as a driver is to, to do those things, even sometimes when they're the uh, the hard, difficult talks that you don't want to have. But um, that's my job, and that's what we, they pay me for. And hopefully uh, I can continue to be in that uh, camp. You know, hopefully the uh, Wood Brothers or, uh, you know, I know we have strong lives with Team Penske, so obviously they're a big part of it. For There's a lot of people that go into this uh, decision-making process, but I, um, you know, that, that's my family, and I, I hope to stay here. And kind of relating to that, it seems like the summer months have been pretty strong for you in past seasons. Is there something to the schedule or is it more of just trying to prove yourself in the closing stages of the season? No, it's nothing about proving myself. That's that's every day I ever step foot in a race car, whether it's practice, qualifying, race, uh, whether I've been doing this for two years or 10 years or, or whatever, that never changes. So it's funny you ask that question because um, I was laughing about that this week. I was like, man, it's always the, seems like the second half of the season, you know, we at the 95, but I'll give you the reason why at the 95 team, the first half of the season, we were really a new group of people all working together. We were a small team where we were behind at the shop and really had a ton of work to do to get where we were caught up. And then you kind of hit that halfway point in the season. And it was like, all right, now we're actually working ahead on the race cars and we're, you know, proactive. We've all had a chance to click. We're getting things together. We're more organized at the shop and all these things that people don't see, you know, the fans don't see. And then when you do that, then you're working ahead and you're proactive. And then we're getting more out of the race cars. And then we're running top five, top 10 week in, week out. Uh, on the Wood Brothers side, it's a similar, kind of a similar situation in the sense of that we've had to have some of those hard talks. We had to make a crew chief change in the middle of the season. You know, that's, that's hard. But then again, we're working through these things where you got to, it's hard work, hard talk sometimes. Uh, and we, we do them, we make a big change in the middle of the year. And then, uh, and it's no disrespect to anybody like Greg Irwin. I was super appreciative for him and what he's done for the Wood Brothers for years, but it just, our team wasn't clicking and I felt it. And to be honest with you, you guys know me, I, I say it the way it is. I didn't feel like we were going to win. We were not a winning team. We, we just, the dynamic wasn't there. We weren't meshing. It's all about relationships and it just wasn't there. And then, uh, we, you know, we make this change, which is so hard, you know, that's you, you, you empathize with people. I care about people. Um, but at the end of the day, I gotta do my job and we all, you know, worked hard, talked and made this change, have Jonathan Hassler on the box. And it's all about relationships. And then it's like, boom, we click. And now we're <laughs> rocking and rolling and running up front, leading laps, top tens, can, you know, contending and we're just getting better and better and we're just getting started together. So uh, um, to answer your question, that's the long version of it, but it's an important question for me to, to answer to everybody because I've gotten that a lot uh, is that's where kind of our performance gain is coming from right now. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's go to Tucker White. Go ahead, Tucker. <clears throat> uh, Matt, uh, looking ahead to uh, Charlotte down the, down the road. We've seen that the uh, service there at Charlotte is about 15 or 16 years old at this point, and it looks like it hasn't even aged it. Well, it looks like it was just repaid a few days ago. And given that, 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 what kind of tire wear do you see at Charlotte compared to, say, Darlington, which was repaved at the exact same time? Yeah, totally different. Um, I will say, though, Charlotte does have a decent amount of tire fall off. I mean, tires are, are pretty important. So 
Um, it's kind of an in the middle, but yeah, then you compare it to a Darlington, which was repaid at the same time. I mean, Darlington feels like you're driving on ice, uh, which is an absolute blast and a two straight through tires. But I think it's just the environment that the tracks are exposed to. Um, Charlotte not being quite as uh, tw- quite as gritty or sandy or whatever you want to call it. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it, it, you hate to see, obviously, Atlanta have to be repaved. We love those tracks that have a lot of character and tire fall off and uh, stuff like that. That's what makes them great. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Lee Spencer, you are up. Thank you kindly, Dan. Uh, And thanks for joining us, Matt. I I have a few questions, so I'll just let them roll. Um, Interested about your comments about wanting to to look at the Chili Bowl Nationals. First of all, remind me if you ever competed against Brad Sweet since you're from the same hometown. I know I've asked you this in the past, but... Um, yeah, we, uh, I don't know if we raced in the same class. Uh, I think he was, you know, usually a class above me, um, because he was a little bit older. So yeah, racing back at cycle land speedway. Uh, but we did, uh, we were friends with their family. Actually, ironically, his, his dad bought my dad's appliance repair business when we left and he does the same thing out in the same area. So, uh, very small world. So we, uh, yeah, we knew them very well, but didn't compete directly against each other. And, What, you know, just what really piqued your curiosity about doing this? Because, I mean, if you talk to Chase Elliott, if you talk to Ryan Newman, if you talk to Kenny Wallace, I mean, these are guys that, you know, went back and did the Chili Bowl years later and really understand how challenging an event that is. And so I'm just kind of curious, was it you just wanted to push yourself and see, you know, how far or you could get you know, say in the, once the features start rolling around? Uh, yeah, I think it's just a personal thing and, and for fun, you know, we're, we're all competitive though, anytime we hop in a race car. So that's why I hopped in a midget was just to see where I stacked up, how I felt like I did, how I felt like I adapted and I exceeded my expectations and the teams. I think, you know, it was, I was pretty much ripping laps, won the heat race, like right off the bat with no experience. And they were like, well, it looks like you've been racing them your whole life. So um, that's kind of a confidence booster. Check the box. Like, all right, I know I can do this. I have the confidence in myself to do it. Just want to go and get get some seat time and see. Uh, Chili Bowl, I, I've just always loved watching it. I talked to Kyle Larson a lot about that since we came from the same background. We raced each other, and he's uh, been a big advocate for uh, wanting me to tell him me to race the Chili Bowl and do it, and he has a lot of confidence in me as well. So just kind of um, talking to Chase Briscoe. Uh, you know, some of these guys that all guy are some of these guys that do it and love it. Um, they talk so passionately about how much fun that dirt racing is and racing midgets and how neat the chili bowl is that it just kind of sparks your interest because at the end of the day, we're racers. And and finally, if you did do it and given your alliance with Team Penske, um, Roger doesn't like his guys to race on dirt. Would you have to get special permission to do something like that? If indeed you remain in the, you know, in the 21 or with the organization in in 2022. Yeah, for sure. You know, at the end of the day, um, that that's, they're my boss, you know, the Wood Brothers and, and our alliance with Team Penske, uh, hopefully I get to stay within the the organization. Um, But, you know, they're in charge and they're the boss. So uh, whatever they tell me is that that's what takes presence, you know, and always will. And I wouldn't be angry or upset or anything anyway, you know, you're, you're doing a job and you're representing your team and sponsors and all that stuff. So, um, you know, and also with dirt racing being added to the schedule, that was kind of another thing that sparked my interest. Like, man, it sure won't hurt to get some seat time. I know that the cars are completely different, but dirt racing is a lot about the surface and seeking out the moisture and doing all that. So it's a little bit of a brain refresh um, on all that stuff that I grew up doing. But at the end of the day, uh, to answer your question, yeah, you know, that's it's up to, to those folks making sure they're totally cool with it. And if they weren't, you know, I would I would not do it because they're, uh, you know, they're in charge. They're the boss. And I got in a little bit late, so forgive me if this was already asked. So the final five races leading up to the playoffs, is there one venue in particular you feel like you have the best shot to grab a win that would vault you ahead of the guys ahead of you to get into the playoffs? Uh, if I... Th- if I was circling one off in particular, I would probably say New Hampshire is one I'm looking forward to the most. Our cars seem to be very strong at tracks like that. Uh, the low downforce races are awesome. Um, I love them personally. 
more than the others, more than any others. They're, they're a blast to drive. So it kind of all checks the boxes. But uh, we also have improved our road course cars, and we showed that at Road America. So we've gotten better there, and our super speedways are great. So really, uh, we have, you know, excellent opportunity upcoming. But if I was circling one that I'm most excited about, it's this weekend. Super. Thank you, Guido. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Matt, following up on what Woody was talking about, we've got a two-week break coming up here for the Olympics. Is there an Olympic event, or will, will you watch the Olympics? And if so, is there a certain event that you're kind of interested in more than another that you, you kind of take an interest to? Um, I don't know. If, yeah, I will watch. Uh, I don't know if there's a particular um, – I don't know if there's a particular event that I um, would pick out. I'm trying to think. Weightlifting, uh, maybe, bodybuilding, what, you know, weightlifting, you know, something like that. Yeah, yeah something <laughs> weightlifting oriented. I love, uh, yeah, all the strength related components are, are awesome. <laughs> but no, man, they're all tremendous athletes. I love, uh, heck, probably watching runners, sprinters, things like that. Because I'm like, man, I don't like doing that. And I ain't good at it. <laughs> well, obviously, it's a busy day at the De Benedetto house. We've gotten some cameos from the dog and your phone's going off. And we got obviously lots of activity. So we appreciate you joining us here for a few minutes. Uh, in advance of New Hampshire this weekend, and best of luck. All right, no problem at all. Thank you. Appreciate it.